Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 here in Gelderland. We start this one up like that. Oh yeah, I, I may have altered the width a little tiny bit as well, just so that we don't have to spend forever and a year waiting for the harvest to happen. I hope nobody minds. It's a little bit more efficient this way. It still only takes the tops off when you go backwards with this, and then it does the the rest of it going forward. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to press H here, and we're going to let the hired help slowly ramp up speed and see how things get on. So it's uh, 40 kilometers, 40, it's doing a full 45 kilometers an hour down across the field with our fluorescent green and pink potato harvester. Life does not get much better than that. Right, I'm going to actually just allow this one to do a full cycle around the outside edge of the field before we do anything else. And then there should be enough room for it to turn around properly. This is good. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. Look at the speed that this thing is going. Like, seriously. I mean, I, I really like this potato harvester, but this is insane. The dust that is kicking up behind it. Like, it's not, I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to have a cloud of dust behind a potato harvester like that. So, I mean, the, the actual harvester itself will do sugar beet on top of this. And we're going to need to do sugar beet because we've got a number of different um, items now that will need sugar. Which means that we have to grow sugar beet in order to be able to uh, process that, pro process that, process that into sugar, and then we can use it for some of our other factories that we've got over there. So we'll have to get the sugar beet harvester out, and uh, you know, I honestly don't remember if I've actually gotten round to doing the, the, the sugar beet harvester bit yet. I might have, I might not have. Uh, well, I have to find... You know what? There is an easy way to find out. If I just go into... No, not in there. If I just go into here, and then I go there, and I go beat technology, we... I do have it. It's right there. 35 kilometers an hour. That is also the same width, by the way. That that That, that is also the same width. So, we've got both options, and we're going to want sugar beet. That's going to be one of the next crops that we plant. I might actually put sugar beet in this field. We got it's a nice big field here. We got plenty of room, and there's also with this harvester. It, it's not like we're going to struggle to be able to actually do the harvest. Now, if I stop that one, actually, we're going to go this way because the lines in the field are going this way. So it would it seems like a, a more natural thing if I actually allow the potato harvester to go this way as well. So there's 130,000. The one thing I'm curious about is whether or not we can unload this one as it harvests. Like, are we going to be able to drive alongside it fast enough to be able to unload it as it goes? Or are we just not going to be able to achieve that goal? Like, I'd like to be able to. Also, I'm curious if it's going to be able to turn around properly. It's gonna potentially struggle with this. It did potentially struggle with a little bit, with it a bit in testing. It's because it's a little bit unsure as to how big it is. Wonder if it might fare a little bit better if I was to change the steering option because it that's the bit that seems to confuse it all right now we go back across the field again so he seems to be doing okay with this this bit is fine he's, he's absolutely fine with this it's just the turning at the end of the field so if I change the steering mode not to one of the crab steerings but just to so the only the front wheels are actually turning maybe that would work a little bit better so if I go into here we've got control Y we've got turn steering um, that's crab steering left crab steering right for those of you who don't know what crab steering is Basically, the machine goes across the field like this. And the reason it does that is so that those, all those big tyres there, uh, with all the weight of the machine, they're not all in line. 
they're, they're not in line at all. They're all sort of going side by side. And the reason that that is beneficial is because it stops the... So you can you can adjust the machine as you go along a little bit, but when you get to the end of the row, you would take it out of crab steering and put it into normal steering in order to turn around and go back up again. Um, but this stops compaction. In real, they do actually do this in real life. They have crab steering like this in real life, and they just drive along up the road like that. Um, it stops the soil from becoming excessively compacted on the lines where the machine is running. So you'll see a lot of them actually doing this in real life. Um, if I go control Y again, this time I've got all wheel steering. So it's the wheel steering, but not the actual cab turning itself. And if I bring that one in over here, I'm going to do one run across the field manually now. And I'm going to do that with crab steering. And you can turn the crab steering either way. So, uh, control Y. That's the turn steering so that we've got the cab turning as well. So it turns, it gets the articulated steering. And then I've got crab steering going right here. Now, crab steering normally doesn't work with AI. AI doesn't like crab steering. It'll always turn it off and it'll automatically go to another version of steering. So if I just start that one there, I can start heading across the field. So we can see that we've got crab steering going on right there, and it does work there, all, all, all the different lines. Uh, if I just stop that one a second, I'm going to turn the other crab steering on, and I'm going to try line that up so that it's going the other way there so we're, we're we're doing the crab steering going this way now again i think it does look really cool when it's doing it and i'm now going to change this to the ai and i'm going to see what the ai does as we go along so he's nearly full and it looks like it was automatically changed to the articulated steering which i was kind of expecting there we go Right, so I'm going to turn off the hired help once more, and I'm going to turn it round so it lines up on the end here. And I'll go there, and then I will change the steering mode, turn steering, crab steering, all wheel steering like that, and set the hired help going doesn't tell me what the steering mode is at the moment what I'd like to do very quickly while that one is rushing down there is I want to get this one uh, right you know what we're going to have to do we're going to have to stop it because I don't think it's going to be 95% 96 97 uh, it's automatically switched to the other form of steering so it that's, that's the kind of standard one for the AI, so we'll just leave that one there. I'm going to put that out because I just don't think I'm going to be able to keep up with the thing. And I'm going to... Well, you know what? I'll go and take a little bit of the potatoes off of it. I won't take all of the potatoes off of it, but I'll take some of them off and then we can set the hired help going again and we'll be able to see if we can keep up with it. I'm curious if I can actually unload this one as it drives along in the field. That that would be a very, very cool thing if we can do that. So that one can unload a little bit. I will jump to you. I'm down to about 60% right there, so I'm going to just fold that up again and bring it round here, like this. Set the hired help. Off you go with another rush, and we will go. We've got a lot of vehicles here. There we go. And we will see if we can catch up with this thing. I'll get down to the other end, and we'll sort of get ourselves positioned so that we're lined up, and then we'll see if we've got any chance at all of keeping up with it and unloading as we go along. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it, but we've got to wait for it to turn around because I want the hired help to do this bit. 
I want the hired help to actually turn around and then start off across the field. But we've got to wait for it to do all of this, trying to figure out which way it's going and, and so on. Because of the unusually wide width of the header, it's throwing it for a, a little bit of a loop. So it is confusing it a little tiny bit. Right, there we go. He's starting up, so I need to get up beside it quickly or I'm just not going to be able to do this. And then we need to race down beside it as it goes across the field. Okay, this is actually working. I'm actually unloading it as we go. <laughs> My driving's terrible here. Uh, it, is, it is actually working. And also, we, we've gotten to this bit as well. So we're, we're able to like take off all the rest of the potatoes that it's holding. Um, and it stopped in the right place. I think this is... I'm going to count this as a win. I'm going to take this as a solid win right here. Now, I'm just going to wait for that one to finish unloading. And then as soon as it does, we've still got 100,000 litres of potatoes on board. As soon as it does, we will run our machine, our, our trailer with potatoes, over to the potato factory. And we'll start having a look at some stuff there. We've got the water that is still filling up right now. Right. Potatoes are done. He's going to go and start doing his turning round. So we can leave that one to carry on and do a little bit more of the harvest. This field here is going to need to be ploughed before we can... Well, not necessarily before we can, just it does need to be ploughed. It's going to have the, the, the ploughing thing. And that is one of the requirements that I've left on on this map. I thought it would be better. Also thinking that, yes, we will take the other trailer that we've got there down to the dealership. We'll sell that one and we will get the TARDIS trailer instead. I didn't actually mean to do that. That was me trying to stop too quickly. I think this trailer does actually have weight then. But it seems like. Now, can I tip both lots in here? I can certainly tip the potatoes. Let's open that one up. That's the that's the back end for the potatoes. Now, we can put 200,000 litres of potatoes in this factory. The rest of them will need to go into storage somewhere before we can do anything else. I might decide to come along later and just make some casual little adjustments to some of the things in here. I don't know where we're going to get peppers from. It takes 100,000 litres of peppers there. I think it must be a greenhouse that we can get them from. Um, Yeah, I might just change the total capacities on this like to do a whole load of tweaking on this mod so that we've got a lot more capacities and potentially also change the number of cycles per month just so that we've got a lot more that we can go and use now uh that oh wait is, is that have i already got two i have i've already got two hundred thousand litres of potatoes in here most excellent so to start with we've got some milk how have i got oh I was wondering how I got cheese in here. I know how I've got cheese in here. Because this one over here, the dairy, I set cheese to distributing. Because I was basically just keeping hold of it until I could go and sell it somewhere. Our chowder that we're making in here. Um, but I didn't... I forgot that this one takes cheese. So that's where the cheese is going at the moment. And it will keep doing that until we kind of run out. Well, that's fine, actually. That, that, that's good, because the, the butter is staying there on, on the spawn point. I don't think we require... Oh, it does also require butter. Maybe I should spawn some butter in here. Where else do we want butter? Is it? Do, do we need butter on anything else? That we've got? Yeah, we do. We need that on cakes. Um, I guess I could just set everything to um, distribute, rather than us having to move them around manually. I, I'll do that later. I, I, I do like being able to move some pallets around. So we, we'll go back and we'll do some more with that a bit later on. Uh, next, I want to go over this way. And... Yeah, I've got some potatoes in the pig feeder thing. And then i got some other potatoes over here. So I want to go to... Wait, you're doing just fine. You're going to actually finish this field pretty soon. I have the whole thing done. In no time at all. Let's just have another watch as it goes whizzing across. I love this thing. I absolutely. I wouldn't. I, I don't think I will get tired of that. That is so awesome. Right, he's going to turn around, and that is a little bit time consuming and tiresome. So, uh, you right here, I've got 60,000 litres of water, which we're going to go and put into 
thing up there. I need to move a trailer out of the way so that I can empty out those potatoes that I've got in the trailer on the lorry. This trailer right here, I want to take that one and I want to sell it so that I can have a different type of trailer, which is absolutely fine. Uh, you, I'm going to start unloading into there. Then I'm going to go to, well, this one. I want to move this one out of the way. So we do want to keep this TARDIS trailer that we've got right here. Two million litre capacity. That is excellent. It's most excellent. It is wonderful. I'm going to bring you up this way. I was wondering about using the tree begone to remove the two small trees on the side of the field in the potato field that we're doing at the moment, but I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to leave that because I don't think we need to worry about it. I think it's absolutely fine just the way it is. That one's going to come off there. Um, I have a use for you a little bit later, so you can stay there for a minute. And now I can have these potatoes and I can go and unload these. Right here, that potato harvester up there is nearly finished. So I need to go there and then press U so that I unload the front section right there. Right, that's going to do that bit. And then this one here is the one that I want to take back to the shop. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to go like this and then I'm going to go up there. I'm not going to try and send the hired help down the road with that tractor and trailer just because I think it might end up being a bit difficult for me. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the RX right there. Zoom in. Where's the trailer? Why is the trailer not marked here? Oh, I think it's because the trailer is hooked on the back so you only get the front bit. So I'm going to reset that John Deere to the shop like that. And now I've got the trailer sat there on its own. So we have that one. I'm going to reset that one to the shop as well. So there. It just makes it easier to keep track, I guess, with, with having them like that. And that was now down at the shop. You over here have decided to give up for some peculiar reason. You, you stopped a little bit too soon on that bit. So what I'll do instead is if I turn around and then start that one up. Go in like this, there. Right, that is every single little tiny tatey po has now been harvested from this field. I'm going to go whizzing off down here. I got another 180,000 litres of potatoes in here, which if I put that one out, uh, I could bring it down. So we've, we've harvested our potatoes. That's, that's all done. We've got potatoes in the factory over there. That's ready to go as well. I probably going to make some adjustments. If I make adjustments to that, I will be making adjustments to some other factories as well. So it's going to take a little while. I've, I've got plans. Um, unfortunately, though, I am well aware that if I adjust that potato factory, I've either got to rename it and buy a different one, or I've got to... Uh, hmm. I guess I could... I'm just thinking about whether or not I want to use that potato factory in another playthrough. I, I'm seriously considering using it in a time lapse because of all of the options that it's got in there. And I really do love all those options. I think they're amazing. Um, and so I'm kind of thinking that I'd like to use them. Anyway, that, that's something that I, I can figure out for myself. So now if I go into you and I start unloading that lot. Is it going to stop this one from unloading once it gets down to almost zero? Because it's unloading faster than it's loading. Oh, it did. It, it closed it up again. Right, well, I just got to wait for this lot to kind of, like, drop into the store. Oh, actually, while that's doing that, we, we don't need to sit and wait and do anything. We, we can just go here. Right. I don't have a John Deere. I need this John Deere to pick up this trailer we'll take it round and it it is actually worth doing this right even if you bring it near the shop if you sell it through the shop interface uh you still lose money on the sale if you want to get the maximum amount of money from it this is for like i i, I know that most of you already know this but there are some of you who haven't played this game um so if you want to get the maximum amount of money uh, you bring it to the actual shop sale point. I think that the base game will give you... Let's have a look, actually. We'll 
see what it's because I've got that one there ready to sell. I wonder if there's a difference between selling it via the screen here and selling it actually in the game. So I've got this trailer right here. Yeah. If I click on sell right there, 46,869 is what it's currently offering me. So then if I go over here to interact right there, it's offering me 51,555. It's offering me another five grand on top of what it was offering previously, which is another 10% ish on the, the price. So you do get better value. Also, if you repaint and repair, you get more money back than what you spend on the repainting and the repair. So we're now being offered 52,700. We're probably up like 50 euros on what we just invested in that. Um, this is definitely always the best way to sell them, is to bring them to the store and sell them there. It's basically to incentivize you to play slightly more realistically rather than just selling them as they are right out in the field. If I'm selling small equipment, I'll just sell it where it is. Um, you know, dealerships come and collected it, so you, you've got to pay like a bit of a fee for them to come and get it. But honestly, I don't want to be paying like a 10% fee for them to come and collect something that is worth a half a million euros. Because, you know, that's, that's 50 grand. That, that, that makes a big difference. So we're going to go in here now, and we're going to go and look for that trailer that I was looking at previously. It's all the way up here. There we go. TARDIS Cat. The actual one that I won, I did deliberately increase the price because I thought that this would fairly reflect the fact that this trailer can run around with 2 million litres of um, product inside it. So I felt that that was a sensible and uh, a decent price extension. So that is 1.5 million litres in the short trailer right there, in the low trailer. And then if you put the high sides on, you gain an additional half a million liters so i'm gonna actually take this one because i quite like the look of this configuration right here and i also like the fact that i can put 1.5 million liters in that low-sided trailer i just think that's awesome uh we've got standard two wide tires wide tires two from trailborg we've got michelins we've got bkt's Fredestein, there is actually, someone did do some testing to see which is the better tyres. I can't remember what the results were, but there are, some are better than others. Um, right now, I'm kind of thinking that I want wide Michelins, just because I like the look of those. Um, our other one, we've kept with the TARDIS colours. This one... Uh... Honestly, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm kind of thinking, can we do... No, we don't want to do that. Maybe uh, red. Hmm. No, I don't like... I, I don't like that. Let, let me play around and see if I can come up with an idea, a design that I like. 158,300 euros. And I decided to go with a black and yellow scheme. Mainly because I really like black and yellow. Although I'm kind of thinking that because I'm going to be spending a lot of time using this tractor, probably with this trailer, uh, maybe I should have gone with pink. Actually, I probably won't be using this tractor with this trailer because I don't like the way that it hangs down like that. So I think we'll probably use a different tractor with this trailer in the future. But uh, for now, just, just for the moment, we'll stick with this tractor and then... Um, well, once I get back to the yard, I might change it over because, yeah, I don't like that. I don't like the way that bends down. It, it, that's wrong. That's, that's just wrong on every level. Look at it. See? Look, look, look. That, that is wrong on so many levels. Mainly because it's not level. And I still got work to do here. I need to join these fields together. It is actually something that I'm going to do before we do any work in that field so I, I need to sort of work on joining them i've got the other ones to join down there i got a lot of things that i need to do we've got the sunflowers in here which technically aren't available on the map but they're growing so i'm going to take this as a good sign we might actually be able to use them at least i'm hoping that we can use them Ooh, i'm curious does that one have a hitch on the back of it let's have a look Right, you're done, so what I can do here is if I just fold that one up, um, 
We'll move this one back out of the way and we can unhitch the header. So if I fold that one up, I uh, folded the header up and then we will bring that one round. We've actually got to line this one up and get it hooked on fairly straight and level. Which I do kind of like, I must admit. Yeah, right, we'll bring that one in like that and then unhitch. There, and I can also start folding this one up. Because it will still allow me to use whichever steering mode that I want, even though we're folding it up. And then all i got to do is reverse on here, hook that one in, and job done. Excellent. Right, so if I just bring you around over here, I'll put it down this way for now. Again, I'm going to be doing stuff with this later on, like look, I am going to be putting all the machinery away in sheds and stuff, and, and we'll have it, you know, put put away sensibly and carefully. Uh, this one right here, do you, you do have a hitch, except that I don't think that the hitch is going to be any better than that one. I think it's too low down. Yeah, it's going to be the same as that one. It's going to be the wrong type of hitch. Well, let's go and have a look a second. You... Why have you got a hundred thousand? Oh, it's because I need to oh, empty it out. Right. Right. So you can do that, and then I can go over here and have this one. So for a minute, I will unhitch that trailer and I'll leave it there. This tractor, I don't want to be putting onto that trailer because I don't like the way that it, it doesn't hitch on very well. So it's going to have to be a different tractor that we use. Uh, not that one there, but a different one. Let's just bring you over here for a minute. I might have a use for you in a little while. And then I can go to this one, and I'll be able to see if this one... I don't know if it's going to hitch onto the trailer or not. It actually, be, I think it'd be quite funny to be able to use this one to pull this trailer around. So, it does hitch it on, but again, it's sort of pointing it down slightly. However... It's not leaning downhill as much as it was with the other one, with, with that tractor over there. It's, it, it, this is actually better than the other one. And also, this vehicle is quite fast. I, I like this. I like this combination. We, we might just use this one to tow the trailer around. What I was also going to do is I was going to pull up here. Now, this will hold one and a half million litres. Do I want to go and buy one and a half million litres of barley in order to feed our chickens? Hmm. What do the chickens take? So look. Food, 340. Do they have three million capacity? I'm genuinely not sure. I can't remember at the moment. I think I've already bought new chickens this month, haven't I? So we're going to need to just skip another month. Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.